Okay, now let's imagine that we go and we are doing some reading about our database and we decide, we learn that MJ did not die in 2011. Say so he died in 2012. How many times do we have to change that piece of data in the system? Right now. Where would we have to change it? We'd have to change it twice. So I'd have to come through, I'd have to make sure that I first of all sort to find all of my MJ albums, then I'd have to make sure that I can see them all, and then I'd have to make sure that I change each one to another year. What's the, what's the data integrity problem that has now arisen? What if there are 40 albums by the same artist? Take forever. Take forever, so it's time consuming, and most importantly from a data perspective, what if you miss one and you leave it at 2011? Someone using your database, they won't know, will they? They won't know whether you were trying to change them all to 2012 and you missed one or whether you entered them all wrong in 2012 and, and 2011 was the correct one. So database, this is very common, right? It's very common to store information that are related to some category, like a person who has an address. You can think about this if you have loaned out two items to a friend, the same friend, and you want to store their email address. Storing that same piece of data twice is a, is a mess. Again, the minute you have two different versions of the same piece of data, the usefulness of that data is completely wrong. I mean, the year may not be a, a trivial, a, a big deal. What if it's an email address and one of them has an A instead of an E? That's a mess. So what we're now going to do is take our idea of a spreadsheet and make it into a database. So the, the, what would, ideally we'd have how many copies of each piece of information? We'd have one, and of course a backup of the whole system, but we want that backup to reflect the, the one correct copy. So the idea in databases is that instead of adding a whole bunch of columns for artists, we're going to make a new table. Guess what we're going to call this table? Artist. And this is where we're going to put our death year. And death year, we said, was text. What else might we record about the artist now that we have a nice table just for the artist? Nationality, hometown, pardon? Birth, Birth year. Yeah, maybe we care when they were born. What type? Nationality. Probably text. Maybe we want to put a link to uh, their Wikipedia page or their site, their, what do we call it, their bio, their bio page. So link. That's also going to be text. Okay, well this looks a lot better storing this data over here. So, in other words, we'd only want, if we transfer MJ over, so death year, we were going to say 2011, birth year, late 70s? Mid 70s, probably? No, 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 late 60s. Late 60s? Yeah, you all have phones in your pockets. We could actually be looking this up. This is an interesting question. I'm going to make sure this is still going. When was Michael Jackson born? Oh. <laughs> Michael Jackson was born on August 24, 1958. 58. Okay. A robot entered the class. 1958 nationality, American. Uh, link to bio. I'm sure MJ.com is something. Um, great. Now, what are we going to do? What, what's this not, what's it missing? Yeah, we have to figure out how to get these to connect. Ideas?
Yes, we have to connect these somehow. What does the line mean in a computer? There are no lines in a computer. How do you implement that digitally? What if we gave each artist an ID number? Artist ID. We'll make this an integer. If we gave each artist an ID number, let's give MJ ID of 100. What could we put here to connect them? Yes. Yes, in fact, we could. So what this means is instead of putting in the artist's name, we would put in 100. Now, what are we going to change the column header to? Artist ID. Yes. We're going to change it to artist ID. And we're going to change it to whatever the data type is here. This is the other key thing in databases is if you're going to link the columns, they have to match. And the first way that they need to match is that their data types are identical. So they both have to be int. You can make a join on any type of data. They just have to be the same. Okay. So we need to deal with opeth because opeth, if this were in the table, would not be savable. Why not? Why couldn't we save this table in its current state? Yeah, it will give us a type error. And this is an important feature of databases. So when we move into building it, I want you to remember that there are potentially more flags that come up in the design process than you might be used to. The reason for that is that it's enforcing this information. Okay. You had a question, Richard? Uh, then if you're going to tie this to your other table, mm -hmm. so you need those last two columns. We would transfer those over. Okay. Yep, good, good thinking. So we're going to change art. And now, here's an interesting point. If I have this table sitting here, and right now these are null values, we're going to do something special called enforcing database integrity, which is if I come in and want to put in data for OPETH from J, what am I going to need before I can put a number for artist ID? If we tell the database, this column, artist ID, look at me dropping stuff everywhere. If we make this a special column, that's not special enough, it's red. If we make this the special column, we can think of it like a link column. Okay, how about that special column that Eric was talking about in the in-class video? I've done some adjusting of our tables to make the linking possible. So let's review what we've done. We have moved, so here's Ta oop. Here's table album, and no longer is there an artist column, but there is an artist ID column. That artist ID column is designed to link up with, here's the artist table, with the artist ID from the artist table, where we then can store individual artist-based information. So you can see that I've transferred Opeth and Michael Jackson over to our artist table where we have to enter that information only once. That's critical. We are avoiding data duplication by splitting off duplicated data into its own table and then linking the table. And we're doing that linking with the ID number. How do we tell the database that this column, artist ID inside album and artist ID inside artists are linked. Well, we do that with the relationships window. So if we come here back to our main base and we say relationships, we get an interesting looking window. I'm going to go grab that window. Okay, so here's the window. Let me zoom out so you can see what's going on. So here is our relationships window. Now, 
what's going on here is it says add table. So this isn't any particular operation. This is just saying I want to be able to see these two tables. I'm going to resize this so we can do this together. Notice we are looking at the tables. No data in here. These are, again, the columns listed in vertical order, or it's a, a listing of the columns that in the normal view of our tables or the familiar view of our tables become the columns. So here we are in relationships. What do we want to relate? Let's pull this up. What we wanted to say was that the artist ID in album needs to get linked with the artist ID in side artist. So what I did was I clicked and dragged from artist ID up to artist. Let's do that one more time. In fact, I can delete that relationship and do it again. So I can say here, delete that. So watch what I do. I drag from artist ID to artist ID in the artist table. Now notice that we have this end to one, which means an album can at most have one artist. But an artist could have artists could have up to uh, an infinite number of albums. And this is the relationship that we want. So now we can save this and we have created this special link. Now watch what happens when we jump back into our uh, edit data mode. So I can pull up my tables again. Now if I come to our album table and I want to link up an album with the artist that made it, watch what happens. I have to enter an existing artist ID in this column. Right now we have this column linked with this one. So if I come and try to say Ghost Reveries was, let's see, that was Opeth. So their ID is one. And then they also made Heritage. And then Michael Jackson did the next two. So now I have the tables linked. Artist ID in album is linked up with artist ID in artist. Now let's remember that if I try to say add an artist ID of 23, what do we expect to happen? The database, its key function is to not let us try to link an artist with any artist that doesn't exist. So if I click doink, now watch, look at this, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Error updating the current record. Integrity constraint violation. That sounds really bad. No parent sys key foreign key underscore 69 table album in the statement. And then we get the SQL, the database language version of what the program was actually trying to do. So what it's saying is it can't set artist ID to 23 because there's no 23 in this table. There's only one and two. And it's enforcing that. It would be nonsensical to say, oh, Ghost Reveries, it was made by an artist whose ID number is 12 because there's no artist with an ID of 12. We can't give someone an artist that doesn't exist. We can allow an album to not have an artist, but we can't say it has an, an artist that does not exist. All right, so that was the essentials of this linking process. Again, we use the fancy relationship table to enforce what's called data integrity constraints, which allows us to enforce how our tables are linked and the data that we enter to make sure that it appropriately follows those linking rules. And with that, you can move on to the next segment. Okay, so we have that basic idea of connecting with the foreign keys. Um, another important point is because we're going to be doing a lot of sorting in a database and tracking things, every row and every table must be uniquely identifiable because we have to be able to move this data around row by row. And so even though we have not made a link to this table from another table, we still need to be able to identify each row uniquely. And as a database designer, you want to ensure that that's a sensible process. So you usually make a, um, an ID column for every table that you control. So we would just say, this is ID 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4. Even though it's the case for most 
uh, tables like this, it would be unlikely to have exactly the same information in each row. But can you ensure that if you're letting someone else use your database? No. So you make your ID and you enforce it and it should be something that you control. And what I mean by control is uh, some people will make databases and they'll use an existing ID. Like if you were making a database for a CCAC, maybe you would say, well, every student has a unique ID. I'll just use their ID and not give them a new ID. What's the potential problem with that if it's your database? What if someone else goofed in CCAC? What if they gave two students the same ID number? It's a big problem because you wouldn't be able to enter them both because the database, if you declare a column to be the primary key, which is what we call the identifier, primary key, it will not let you enter a duplicate value. And it's going to help you with that. Now it may mean that when you're working with the database it'll put up an error, but again we shouldn't be afraid of the error. They're all going to be sensible. And unfortunately a common database tool, you know what Microsoft's database tool is? Access. Um, access is probably the most toxic, horrible, stress-inducing piece of software that the earth has ever seen. This is their flagship desktop database and I have had a dozen conversations with teachers where they say I would never try to teach, I would never bestow the horror of access even on my least favorite students. Um, because it's known for giving you errors related to the database structure but they don't help you and you can't close out of the windows until you fix the error but it doesn't say oh by the way this is a foreign key problem to change your foreign key issue you can do XYZ so when you hear about access it's very similar to what we'll use which is the free and open source version LibreOffice base but base actually gives you error messages that try to help you and so we're going to be exploring um, building this up and uh, then we'll have some work time for you to actually uh, put in some data into uh, uh, tables that you enjoy and then we'll come back and learn about a couple of other cool things for databases. All right, let's take a peek at this on the digital side. We want to add a primary key, an integer identifier for each of our albums. And as we've learned before, if we want to make adjustments to a table, we right click that table and then we select which view we would like to use in adjusting the table. Now, because I want to add or adjust the entire column, I want to add an ID column, I want to go to edit because I'm editing the structure of the table. So here I go. Here is my listing of columns. Okay, remember we're looking at columns in a table about those columns. So columns are existing one column per row because this is a table about columns just like each row and album is an album because it's a table about albums. So now we've got a couple of things to learn here. So if I come in and say album ID, I can now choose the type. In this case, I want type integer because it's going to be a number. And I can say the goal of this is to be the primary key slash unique identifier for each album. Now watch this. When I click this row, I have a number of options down here. I can say, is the entry, is an entry required in this table? And right now, if I try to say yes, an entry is required for album ID. And then I come and hit save. I'm going to get an error. It says, error while saving table design. Column constraints are not acceptable in this statement. Alter table album, add album ID, integer, not null. What it's giving us is the actual language called SQL that is used to communicate with the database. And it attempted to ask the database to add the column album ID and to make it such that it must have a value for every album we enter. 
Now let's see why this is an issue. If I come back and open album except now in open mode, now we're seeing the actual data in our album table. Notice if I add a blank column, album ID, there won't be anything in it. So that's why our design view will not let us add the column with an entry required constraint. It, I must not require an entry. Now I can save it. If I come back here and refresh, actually I have to close it and then refresh in open mode. There it is. Here's our new column. In this case, we can go ahead and add as we did in the in-person session. We can add an integer ID to each of those. I can save it. Now watch what I can do. I want the primary key, so I want to tell the system now that album ID is the unique identifier. Previously it was name, but it's certainly possible that two albums in the history of vinyl records could have the same name. So we want to be able to ensure that we can enter whatever the name of the album is without having an error in the database. Now I can hit save and it's happy because I have data in each of those fields. This is a primary uh, function of databases is that it must have a way to uniquely identify every single row and every single table and we can tell it which column to use and we call that a primary key and that's why we see a little key right next to the symbol.